Finally, gang, the days are getting longer, the temperature's rising, and one thing is for sure, the fish have certainly woken up. And today I've brought you to one of my favourite commercial fisheries in the winter and springtime, Messingham Sands. And the main reason I love it here is it's full of so many different species of fish. And the thing that I want to talk to you about today is trying to catch big numbers of different species because when it's been freezing cold and starts to warm up and lots of different fish start feeding whether you're a pleasure angler or a match angler you can have a fantastic day by targeting variety and of course in a match situation catching fish like skimmers perch crucians f1s mixed in with the big carp as well is a very good way of building a weight and if you're a pleasure angler you can have an awesome day's fishing. So I'm going to chat to you about a two-pronged attack, feeder and pole, that will give you an amazing day's sport at this time of year. So the first thing to look at is what methods are you going to fish and whereabouts in your peg and that's really important in the springtime because these little fellas have probably been huddled up in their winter haunts during the cold weather but as soon as the light changes and the temperature does start to rise they move about a lot more so the reason for both a feeder and pole attack is because you cover lots of options if the fish are still out in the lake you've got your feeder approach to target them out there and we're on swan lake at messingham sands today it's a big deep venue and when it drops cold the fish live out in the lake so that's why i'll often start the session by plopping a small hybrid feeder not miles out sort of 25 meters but it's out in that main body of the lake and what that does it it gives me a real good starting method to judge where the fish are and if i start catching fish on it it'll sort of tell me that the fish are out there in that deeper water still in the winter horn and you can catch them where they want to be but if the hybrid's a little bit slow to start with the chances are that the fish have started to move about they're looking for food and they're coming in on the pole line and for that reason i always fish a pole line a little bit closer in today 11 meters out it's just at the bottom of the deep shelf that we've got here on this bank and I fed that with three balls of fish meal ground bait at the start f1 dark with a full bag of that with a pint of crushed expander in it 100 percent pure ground expander and a pint of the f1 sweet in there as well and that just gives the mix a nice green color which coming out of winter i really like that it's a little bit more visual a little bit more aggressive and if the fish are coming closer in because they want to eat some bait, they'll be able to see it. And look at that. Missed it. Oh, no, we haven't. They were coming towards me. So having this feeder, I mean, I've had a great start on it this morning. And it's kind of telling me the fish are still out in the lake. But it's given me a good start. And I can build up my pole line. So I've potted the ground bait in to start with. A few worms, a few dead maggots in there. And I'm going to fish this for as long as I'm getting bites, this regular, to be honest. Um, but all the time, I'm going to be loose feeding some maggots and try and build up that closer pole line for later in the day. Because one thing that you do find in the spring is that fish will often move closer in as the day wears on. And that's why the two-pronged attack of feeder out into the main body of the lake and pole a little bit closer in with some ground bait and a, a little bit more of an aggressive feeding strategy, loose feeding some bait to get them in there as well is very, very effective. But as we go in, I'm enjoying catching a few on feeder. Now, in terms of actually catching on the feeder, there's a few things you can do to get quite an edge at this time of year. And the beauty about this approach is you catch all these different sizes of fish from little skimmers, up to F1s, there's some brown goldfish and weird coloured things in here. But with a little bit more refined approach, you can catch everything. And by that, I'm talking about what I'm putting on the feeder and what hook bait and hook and line I've got on. If you were obviously using a 
a very heavy pellet based approach on this and fishing with big wafter hook baits you will get some bites and you'll catch some big fish but you'll miss out on a lot of these that i'm catching at the moment so my attack at this time of year to catch that variety of fish is to use a combo of ground bait and pellets and i've got that same mix f1 dark with a little bit of expander and a little bit of f1 sweet in lovely green color and i'm actually just adding a few pellets to it almost treating the hybrid feeder like a pole pot if i'm not catching i might sprinkle a few more pellets in to bring a few fish in with the ground bait and if i'm catching really well or i feel like i've put too much bait in i'll just simply take a few pellets out of the mix and you can actually control how much you feed um, by introducing different amounts of pellets but for example in this feeder that i've got here there's probably only 30 or 40 micro pellets in there with the ground bait so there's not tons and tons of bait for the fish to eat and that is what's giving me these fast bites off the fish at the moment and hook bait wise i've got a six mil pink tuna wafter on there which is a very bright and attractive hook bait but the size of it means that lots of different species can pick it up and fit it in the mouth and if you balance that with a sensible diameter hook length i've got 015 n gauge on there and a reasonable size hook a size 14 qm1 so everything's proportional and balanced you can have a great day's fishing and catch a lot of fish on a hybrid feeder that you might not normally associate with them. Typical, real good run of fish at the start there, and then things have quietened down. And I've switched up hook baits a couple of times. I just had a little lob out with a dead maggot then. And I'm just gonna change back to a wafter up length. And one thing that I think is important this time of year is to be busy with these little changes two or three fish on a dead maggot say and then a little quiet spell get a wafter on catch a couple i caught some on pink earlier i'm gonna have a chuck in with a yellow essential cell one now and often in the spring little changes and being active and busy with things like hook baits and color is massive and one thing i'm wary of now is I've had four or five casts without a fish. So what I don't want to do is keep plowing lots and lots of pellets in. So I'm just going to have a couple of casts now with less pellets in my ground bait. I've just mixed them in a little bit more. So there's a lot more smell and attraction from the ground bait that's probably not going to fill the fish up. And I'll just see if it brings a quicker bite. And that's the beauty of mixing pellets and ground bait together. You can control how much bait and food particles as in micro pellets you're actually putting in the swim so yellow essential cell six mil and a qm1 stuck in the end of my finger that's not very nice when you've got cold hands is it and let's see if a cast or two with mainly ground bait and just a very odd pellet will get us a bite and one thing I, one other little thing i did want to touch on before I do move on to the pole is a bit of a what's it called when uh, people don't like asking a question a bit of a touchy subject let's say do you like and do you use additives in the winter and for me I love a sweet smelling bait in the winter months I'm not going to sit here and say yeah fish love pineapples and they love the smell of pineapple because I don't think it works like that but what I do think is in cold water, um, sweetness and sugars are very soluble and they spread out into the layers. So if you're looking to put smells and flavours on your bait at this time of year, when the water is still cool, um, always try and go for a sweet edge. For me, I've got the yellow pineapple Captivate dye on my pellets. Not only does it smell really, really sweet, it also gives them a lovely yellowy colour and as you can see, there's probably a cutaway on the screen now. Um, when that's on the feeder, them little micro pellets, when you just sprinkle in a few in your ground, mate, you can see them very, very clearly. And it's got a lovely sweetness that effervesces out into the water. Um, so for me, this time of year, sweet is definitely a little edge. The F1 ground baits I'm using are full of a really nice sweetener and a little bit of yellow attraction and sweet smell on the pellets definitely doesn't hurt in my opinion. And look at that, 
made the change and got one straight away. First chuck within 33 seconds. Just shows mixing it up this time of year, absolutely essential. Different colours, different amounts of bait. If, if you feel like this fish in your peg that you're not catching, a little bit less in terms of pellets. And if you feel like you need to increase the aggression, slip a few more pellets in. So hopefully this will give me another little run. And then we can have a little look at getting on the pole because I do fancy catching a few. It's lovely and mild at the minute. And I've been loose feeding them maggots. One more cast on this though, if the cameraman's gonna allow me. Have we got a nod? Oh, we've got a nod, look at that. See if the yellow can do another one. I want to catch you a big goldfish or a big F1 as well on this, to be honest with you. There's some crackers in here. I'd love to catch a few for you today. Might catch one same colour as me, yeah. What a cracking start to the day we've had on the feeder. It's not been one every chuck in, but what's been nice is we've had to play around with a lot of different things. A few variations of the amount of pellets in the mix and also up baits. Good run on dead maggots, a good run on a pink wafter and then a change to yellow has definitely brought this last run of fish. This feels like another F1. I've had a couple of these now. No goldfishers yet. Um, one other final thing to sort of touch on with this kind of fishing. When you're fishing a little bit smaller hooks and lighter line, you've got to balance it. Really nice soft rod is important. So you can fish them a little bit lighter lines without getting broke off on your hook length. And a main line that's not too thick. This is four pound drag. It's one of our cheapest lines, believe it or not, but it sinks beautifully. Look at these for fish. How golden and nice are the F1s in Messingham? I mean, they're almost like massive crucians. I mean, look at that. That's a cracking fish, that, isn't it? And that's the beauty of this scaled down all round approach is you don't miss out on fish like that. That's probably the best part of pound and a half, two pound, I'm going to say. And as I mentioned earlier, pleasure fishing or in a match, you don't want to be missing out on them beauties but we've got a film to make i'm very excited to try the pole so let's have a little switch up and see what we can catch winds drop nicely gang and i really do feel like it's time to give the pole a go i'm confident we're going to catch some fish i've had a great start on the feeder um but i've been building up that pole line loose feeding maggots quite heavily um, and also obviously I set it up with the better ground bait at the start so before I decide to start feeding any more ground bait on it I want to have a look at it and just get a gauge for whether there's some fish there or not and I think there will be because it's turned a little bit mild the wind's dropped and more importantly later in the day the second part of the session fish do tend to drift a little bit closer in so I am expecting some bites I've set myself up for a big fat Matt Godfrey fail there, and I? But in we go. Two dead maggots on the hook. Now this bottom, it is just sloping away from me slightly. So when I potted them balls in at the beginning, I potted them in holding my pole a little bit behind me just because I feel like they might just break down away from me. I don't know if there's something weird going on with my float there. Look like something we're holding that up, surely not. First chuck. Might have even lost, lost a shot. I'm going to keep this loose feed going in. I think on deepish venues and places where there is a good head of fish, which there clearly is here at Messingham, you can't beat having bait falling through the water. Look at that, straight away. Can't be having bait falling through the water nice and regularly. Obviously, fish not only can they see it, but you gather a lot of them in different areas of the water column, and often the bigger ones you can pin to the bottom 
by topping up the ground bait. Watch this, that looks like a big perch, that does. We're on a right species hunt today, look at him. You know what, I, I had a new, um, I had a new name for these the other day that I'm gonna try and start the trend of, Razorbacks. Good, aren't they? Look at that. But that's the beauty of this approach. You get bites off so many different kinds of fish. I mean, we've had skimmers, we've had F1s, we've had roach, um, all on the feeder, and then first drop in on the pole, a chunky perch, and that combination of sweet fish meal ground bait with some worms, chopped up nice and finely in there, some dead maggots and a few pellets, and then constant loose feed and maggots to keep bringing fish in is appealing to literally everything. So this time of year, coming out of the winter into spring, it's a perfect approach to get a lot of bites and build a good weight. And the nice thing that I like about it is, if you're not on the stack of carp or the part of the lake where all the big fish is, you still have a fantastic day's fishing and give you, if you're in a match, best chance of winning your section or getting a frame in place or on a pleasure day, you just enjoy yourself catching loads of different fish. And there you go. Just shows, doesn't it? Letting it settle and fishing that feeder to start with just gives you a right good chance of gathering them and look at the skimmer this time. Just shows that there's a lot of fish competing to go in and catch two as quick as that. I think we're in for a really good finish now on this. Just a case of working at it and seeing if we can pinpoint a few better ones, I reckon. Wonder if some of them bigger F1s or bigger skimmers will drift in onto the pole line. We might need to top up with a little bit of ground bait. That combo of loose feed and topping up with little balls can be deadly because obviously when you fire your maggots in, they land over quite a big area, they make some noise, you get fish in a big area, which is fantastic for drawing a load into the swim, but to pinpoint the bigger ones, you might just need to pot in. Look at that, it's rigid. That's a better one straight away. You might just need to pot in odd little nuggets just to focus them back on the bottom. And that, that combo of loose feeding to get them there and get them competing, and then potting little balls to pinpoint them down on the bottom. It's something that I've done a lot with this kind of fishing and it does work a treat. I wonder what this is? Guess the species, isn't it, today? What a place. It's got a yellow hydroelastic in, which is, it's got a little bit of backbone for an odd bonus fish like this, but it's also nice and soft so you don't bump the skimmers and that kind of thing. That looks like a little weird crucian-y thing. What? Almost like a fan tail, that one. Look at him. Great fishing, that, isn't it? Not many commercials that you can go to and catch fish like that. Three drops in on the pole, a perch, a skimmer, and a fan tail. I'm gonna catch a blue marlin next. Rig wise, I have got a one gram float on it. It's about 10 foot deep, so it's a good depth for a commercial. Um, so I've gone for a one grammer, but how I've got it shotted means that I still get a nice fall in the bottom end of the rig. I've got a bulk about 65 centimeters from the hook, so quite high up away from the hook, and then three number nines below that. So the bulk will go down quick, but then that last bit, look at that. That last bit will fall in nice and slow and the beauty of that is when fish are watching it you get to try and catch them on the drop like i just have that one there and i don't know what this is but it's another better one but you'll notice a lot of the bites i'm getting are just as that bait's settling and when you're using that combination of loose feed and potting in little balls there's a lot of fish gathered up above your bait and following it down so if you can sort of mimic that loose feed with your up bait you're on to a winner i don't know what this is it's fighting a bit weird and it's a lucky dip day today
Not sure, this is up in the mouth. Oh, John! 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 We've got a goldfish! <laughs> oh, look at him! Yes! <laughs> Cameraman's looking at me gone out, folks, because I've been talking about these all day. And that's the first one that we've had. Look at that. If, that, if I were a fish, that would be me, wouldn't I? Eh? Absolutely gorgeous. I reckon that's about six drops in on pole, six different species of fish. If that doesn't show you how versatile this approach is, nothing will. Cracking. I'm going to get a picture of that one on my phone. Ka-ching! Ka-ching, ka-ching! Are you ready for another species, folks? Are you ready? And next up is a roach. Variety is the spice of life, isn't it? What a venue this is. Absolutely phenomenal. If anyone wants to come and visit, there is a silverfish league in the winter as well on here. I think it's massively underrated. But if you want some good silver sport, come and have a go at Messingham. What a place. One other thing I wanted to just touch on, not to give too much away in this video is, you might notice when I loose feed my maggots, I try and get most of them to land this side of my float. So when I'm feeding a big pouch, try and get most of them to land just this side and an odd one flicking onto the float itself. And that way, a little bit like feeding the ground bait a little bit back, you're always fishing on the back edge of the feed area. So I believe that when you're doing that and there's a lot of fish in your peg, you actually get a bite a lot quicker because there's less bait where your hook bait is. When you're fishing right in amongst all the ground bait and loads and loads of maggots, it's very difficult for fish to pick out your hook bait. Whereas when you're just on that back edge area of it, your hook bait falls in and it's not amongst millions of other particles, the fish can just pick it out a little bit quicker. Now this is interesting. We've just had... Um, Really good run when we first got in on the pole. And then a few smaller fish. I've had a couple of little roach and then another perch, but a small one. And for me, fish like that appearing after a really good run are a telltale... Telltale? That's a posh word for me, isn't it? Telltale sign that you need to top up. So I think now's the time to start being a little bit more aggressive with some ground bait again try and pinpoint a few more better fish on the bottom there's an awful lot of fish there feeding so i think we need to make sure that there's always some particles there and i'm going to do a do myself a little top up mix now i like to play around and do it fresh on the bank so you can make it up depending what's happening in your peg you might want more bait in it if it's really good which this seems like it is or you might want a little bit less bait in it if Fishing's a little bit tricky, so I'm going to do a little mix now. It's the same ground bait as we started with. F1 dark with a little bit of expander and a little bit of F1 sweet in it. It gives it that lovely green colour. And I've just chopped up a few fresh worms, nice and fine. I've got a few dead maggots in there and dead pinkies. And a nice pinch of the yellow pineapple fishery pellets. And... I'm just gonna add a little bit more ground bait in there. And I wanna make this a consistency that's nice and damp. Because the whole idea of topping up with this is, keeps the fish pinned to the bottom where I want them. There's plenty of particles in there to feed them. And I'm just gonna to top up to start with a, with a nice damp, sort of one hundred size ball. But as you can see, it's got a lot of bait in it, a lot of particles and that wet ground bait will take it straight to the bottom and it won't be too active, it won't be fizzing and popping and crackling. If you feed your ground bait dry, when there's a lot of fish there, often it can send them a little bit crazy off the bottom. So when you're on a lot of fish, like we are here at the minute, try and make it a little bit damper. And I'm just feeding it, like I mentioned, a little bit back because this venue is sloping away from me that way. So when I'm fishing a little bit further and flicking my rig past in this wind. I'll just be on the back edge of that bait. I think that's really important when you've got a lot of fish in your bag. So let's see if that 
settles them back down and we get another run of big ones. I'm still going to keep loose feeding the maggots, nice and aggressive. Let's try and have a really good finish now. Just flicking that rig just past and letting it sort of fall in on the back edge of the bait. That shotting pattern, perfect for it because that last bit just falls in. And you can see it and hopefully get a quick bite. Like that. Oh, missed him. Still going to keep loose feeding. You've got to sort of think there's a lot of fish in the peg from little roach and perch all the way up to them better ones, crucians, F1s, goldfish. So to, to maintain that competition, got to have bait going in. Look at that, straight away, better fish after topping up. I don't know what it is. Skimmer, better roach. Skimmer. Not had one of them for a while. First fish after topping up, chunky little skimmer. At the minute, two dead maggots seems like a good up bait, but of course, just like on that feeder, be open-minded. A little piece of worm could be good, or three dead pinkies. Maybe try a couple of live maggots. I'm a bit of a stickler that once I've started getting a fish mouse drops in on something, though, I'll just keep on that, especially when it's as good as this is at the moment. This has literally just got better and better and better. Loose feeding heavy, setting it up with them balls to start with, nice perch to finish off. And obviously topping up with them little nuggets all the time has just brought so many different fish into me peg. He's gobbled that right down. Now, I haven't got a clue what sort of weight I've got in my net, but I reckon I've got well into double figures on species, roach, perch, skimmers, some better bream, hybrids, goldfish, fantails, F1s, literally everything on two very, very simple tactics. Feeder to start with, out in open water, just assessing the situation and covering your back in case them fish are still in the winter haunts. And then that pole later on, for a big finish, nice and aggressive, using baits and a ground bait approach that's wide open for loads of different fishing. What a day's fishing. Go out there, give it a go, and enjoy yourself. Good luck.